So I'm John Overington from uh, Stratified Medical, a, a London-based uh, so AI company applying um, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, deep learning techniques to, uh, uh, to drug discovery. So here we go. Um, so I, what we're doing is, is reimagining medicine. I'll, I'll come on to, to some of the, I, I guess, bis, big financial challenges facing medicine at the moment. You're probably all familiar with these companies restructuring and merging and things. But it, you know, many audiences really, I, I think, don't understand the scale of the, um, the financial challenge that um, uh, companies, uh, companies have. So um, my background is not in data science. I, I've been at Stratified Medical about four months now, five months. Um, and, and I was brought in, I, I guess, to bring my experience of, of startups. So I was in, a, again, a London-based uh, informatics startup in around about 2000. They were heady days. Um, large farmer, uh, and also as an academic. So I built one of the largest, well, the largest um, open access drug discovery database in the world, huge number of users and, and so forth. So it's a big advocate of open data and public, public data and data integration. So I've got some colleagues in the audience. So if there's any like goofy, fruity, deep learning questions and so forth, they can answer um, over there. Um, and uh, uh, But yeah, I, I, I was going to tell you about the drug discovery and, and some of the areas we're focusing on, on the development of algorithms to really sort of transform um, uh, medicine discovery. So we're located really in, in like an ideal position for the type of work we, we do, right in the middle of uh, London's Knowledge Quarter, uh, right next door to the Turing Institute, British Library, Crick. The Crick is, is I guess, the, the biggest single investment in British bioscience for uh, a generation. Um, the Far Institute, the Wellcome Trust, the biggest funders of biomedical research in, uh, in the UK, uh, University College Hospital, and University College London. And I'm lucky to, to have um, a visiting chair at uh, UCL as well, where I, I collaborate on uh, the genomics and, and genetic validation of, of drug targets. So for me, my commute to work is, is fantastic. So um, is, there's a, a review, or a lovely article from Forbes a few years back that showed the cost of drug discovery. So, so there's many ways of calculating this. If you look on the web, you'll come across um, yeah, 1.8 billion, 2.3 billion, 4.9 billion, whatever. But this was a nice view. Um, uh, yeah, really, money in, drugs out for a large top 10 pharma. $11.8 billion per drug if you gave that cash to AstraZeneca management. So you know, that's, that's unsustainable. If you took Google, the entire market value of Google you know, took the cash, took all the cash from the investors. You'd only end up with 36 new drugs, which is about a year and a half's productivity from pharmaceutical R&D. And, and you know, we probably all would love to be companies the size of Google, but we'd make you know very little impact on on drug discovery at current cost. So, so we really need to rebase and and transform this uh, uh, the cost of discovery. <coughs> so for us, the the sort of holy trinity is the link between drug, disease, and target. There's about 1,500 drugs. Uh, there's about 10 to the 20, 10 to the 21 possible drug-like molecules. And really, I guess, future drug discovery we see is a selection from that huge combinatorial space, drugs with a particular combination of features that bind to a target. They, they interact with the surface features of a protein and, and wiggle into the binding site and, and modulate it. They do that relatively specifically, so they don't interact and, and block other things in the body. Um, and also, those proteins are linked to disease. Um, the, the entire pharmaceutical industry so far has worked out or validated about 400 targets of about 20,000 genes in the human body. So, so the, 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 play, the field of play is, is probably about 19,500 genes could be linked to disease. There's a large number of untreated diseases, and, and one, one of the big sort of pushes at the moment is in the development of drugs against rare diseases. So, so these are often monogenic, um, so a single genetic uh, linkage or, or, or cause, um, relatively easy to identify, relatively easy to identify the patients. And if you can find a drug for those, you, you can have a lot of commercial success and uh, patient impact. So we've established a pipeline for discovery, drug discovery. Uh, we have a large set of um, unstructured data uh, and a large number of, of currently public domain, open source, structured data sources. Uh, the, in, in terms of unstructured data, we've got about 120 million patent full text documents, about 6.5 million 
full text um, uh, scientific articles. And, and this is really the way we generate these triples of drug targets disease. We, we use advanced NLP, NER, and, and, and so forth to tag these triples from the text, put them in a knowledge graph, integrate ag across all these um, uh, available public resources. And then once we've built that graph, we build some sort of data mining approaches to try and get value from it. So, um, and one of the key things we, we're trying to, instead of just like focusing on the, the, the quadrillion little bits we've got in our database, one of the key things we want to do is, is constrain the hypothesis we generate to those that are testable. Yeah, unless you can test something at relatively low cost, again, you've got a bust business model. So we apply the constraints that there are existing assays, ways of measuring or validating the predictions that these AI methods um, actually come up with. So in, in interest of time, just uh, uh, skip, through, um, uh, skip through these. The... Um, of course, semantic markup of the text is pretty important. Tagging the entities, uh, finding genes, proteins, diseases, and so forth in the text is, is a major task, a major foundational task. But the interesting stuff happens on top of that. Once you've got the graph, the deep learning approaches, AI, uh, and data mining approaches to actually discover what makes a good target, what makes a good drug, and, and so forth. This is an interesting, um, very recent publication from... Um, a very large consortium of researchers funded with a ten and a half million pound grant from the Wellcome Trust. This was sequencing 10,000 UK individuals, roughly half of them healthy or, or nominally healthy, and half of them with serious diseases. And the idea was to use genetics to try and find um, drug targets. This is the future. This is the big data that people will be dealing with in the future in the genomics domain. Um, phenotyped, so you know what the patients look like, you know their diseases, you know their sort of metabolic state and, and so forth, um, but also we know their genotype, the underlying genetic sequence in their, uh, in their genomes. But the publication really is only part of the story, so if you want to ingest this data, you've got um, project websites with a whole bunch of downloads, you've got supplementary material, and, and really these, these papers are just summaries, teasers for the, for the data underlying this. Um, and again, a lot of public archives where the raw data is, uh, is deposited. So there's probably you know, five, six um, terabytes of raw sequence data on these public archives that are available with the right data consents uh, and so forth for, uh, for future data mining. So extracting value from the, the published literature isn't as simple taking the text, reading the document, and tagging it up. It's providing these links through to these other sources in a very timely, uh, timely way. So specific interest areas for us in the development of AI approaches are um, selecting the right target. Turns out, you know, one of the reasons we've only discovered about 400 targets out of the 20,000 is not everything's a good target. You can probably look at my phenotype and tell that I'm not a very good sprinter, but I am a pretty good weightlifter, maybe. Um, <laughs> should have chosen a better sport. Darts. I'm a pretty good darts player. That's believable based on my, my physical characteristics. And, and it turns out the drug targets have got the same sort of thing. They, they're a little bit like Goldilocks. The binding sites can't be too big, they can't be too small, they can't be polar, they can't be, can't be too polar, they can't be too greasy. Um, and again, finding ways to identify these good targets from the 20,000 is a huge amount of value. If, if you de-risk a, a lot of that cost, a lot of the, the cost of the $11.8 billion of AstraZeneca R&D was in failure, things that didn't work, targets that didn't do the thing they, they expected. Um, the virtual screening and, and selection, um, so finding the right compound. I guess there are now some nice examples um, of, of uh, people using deep learning approaches to analyze this high-throughput screening data where you take, say, a million, two million compounds, put them in an assay, and try and find the chemical features um, uh, that are associated with some sort of activity. And in a, in a way, it's associated a little bit like with, with image classification or graph classification against a, a, an active versus an inactive set. So a lot of analogies for me in, in the, the success that people have had in, in image processing. Um, and then systems pharmacology, we, we develop a drug against a single target, but of course, when, I, when you take a drug, it interacts with everything in the body. You've got 20,000 decoys there that could do bad things or, or they could do good things. Again, understanding at a systems level how a drug is going to affect the body is really important. And, and these are really ripe. Once you've got the knowledge graph f populated enough and indexed up in the right way, these are now really ripe for, uh, for exploitation. One of the reasons I took this job is, is that the job at Stratified Medical is... Yeah, I, I've worked in the pharma industry for so long that I know the classical approaches don't work. You know, the, the way that people did used to do data mining and, and so forth, the classical, they just do not work. You know, it needs a fundamental change. So I mentioned constraining um, the, 
the hypothesis we generate to those that is testable. We've got quite a nice way to identify the assays, the actual experiments from this knowledge graph, and then be able to plug in um, a hypothesis into a, a graph or a cascade of, of things that we need to, to do in order for the drug to be active in a, in a human, despite the fact that we can push it all the way back to a sort of test tube with, with a recombinant protein and a, uh, a, a sort of cocktail of chemicals. Our knowledge graph comfortably rebuilds um, the expert view of pharmacology, so it's a drug discovery. Um, we cluster targets um, uh, together in the right, right way. We can find, um, I guess, quite complicated concepts from very simple assay chaining. So we get, um, for oncology, we, we, get, we, we get a nice cluster of signal transduction enzymes. These are things that control intracellular signaling. Um, and then another successful part of, of oncology is in um, uh, DNA replication and regulation. So either the, the building of nucleotides to go into, into replicating DNA or the, the transcriptional machinery that controls cell, cell replication. So in summary, Stratified Medica are a full stack um, drug discovery company. Uh, we, we try and tightly link the AI technologies with the underlying data. You know, for us, the progress is really in the data plus the algorithms. Without a lot of data, you can't really train these methods, and, and you know, deep learning approaches are very, very data, data hungry. Um, we're well funded to develop our own drug pipelines, so we're not going to part the, te the technology, the data, and, and so forth. We're, we're going to use it ourselves on our own drug discovery. Uh, we've got an institutional investor base, uh, so no VCs uh, breathing down our neck uh, for now. And also, we, we focus on areas of high unmet medical need. We, we'd be crazy not to say that. You know, we we want to help patients. We, we want to use the technology we have for the good of, of um, uh, healthcare systems. Um, and we've already achieved a couple of key milestones on uh, a multi-million dollar partnered Alzheimer program. And, and you're probably aware that Alzheimer's is one of the, the most challenging and, and tricky diseases to make any, any progress in. So thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.